Good morning, brothers and sisters. To be alive is sometimes to experience pain and even disaster. Jesus warns us not to cover, to overreact to disaster, but to try to see life from a wider perspective. Looking for the coming of the kingdom of God, there is always hope. God will not forsake us. So let us pray. Great God of the seas and mountains, of the sun and the moon and the stars, God of each thing living, you want us to know you, reaching us out to us in love, touching our earth in Jesus Christ and our lives through your Holy Spirit. Be near to us now as we worship you. Whisper our names, speak your truth and guide our ways so that we can live your love. Be with us, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Uh, I'll ask my brother Ben to come and read the word of God from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 to 8. Okay, brother Ben. Praise God, and I hope you're all well this week. Uh, it's once again such an honor to be able to come and read the word of God to you and just uh, uh, speak his truth uh, by just reading. It's awesome. It's um, 100% truth. So as Johnson mentioned, Mark 13, 1 to 8, and it uh, talks about Jesus, tells about the future. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of the disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what, mag what a magnificent building. Do you see all these great buildings? Jesus replied, Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when these things will happen and what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled. Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming, I am he, and he will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will arrive against, arise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. Wow, praise God. So many, many things coming. But yeah, this is the word of the Lord. We'll uh, get Johnson back to hear his message this week on this one. This will be great. I can't wait. And I hope you bring open ears. God bless. Thank you, Brother Ben. I'm back again. And uh, I want to share with you on the theme don't fear the weight don't fear the weight you know when you are waiting some people are afraid of waiting because they don't know the end result but i want to say to you don't fear the weight in our lesson for today jesus addresses the forthcoming destruction of the temple and then uses this opportunity to talk with the disciples about the end time the end of time. So this is the content of Mark 13, one of the so-called apocalyptic chapters in, in, the book, in the Bible. A chapter that has been used to strike fear in many hearts. So the end of time is still a subject of speculation in many Christian churches. And many pastors and teachers are still using it to keep their fearful congregations in line. During the first, this first liturgical season of the year, we are waiting for the coming of the Lord in two ways. His second coming, or parousia, when the world will be claimed by Christ, and his coming in history at Christmas. Today we are told that we must be ready, but there is nothing to fear as we wait God's arrival at the end of time. So in the gospel, Jesus makes it very clear that we must not be complacent, but rather must be vigilant in our waiting. Mark's eschatological discourse paints a powerful scene. The sun will be darkened. The moon will no longer give light. And the stars will fall from the skies. Even the powers of heaven will shake. 
Then the Son of Man will come in great majesty and glory. He will send his angels to collect his chosen, the elect from the four winds and ends of the earth, to claim the world as his own. So Jesus tells his followers that signs will accompany these wondrous events. As we witness the signs of the changing season, so we must be watchful for the signs of Christ's coming. Therefore, he cautions his disciples to be constantly on watch. For the master of the house, symbolic for Christ himself, will return when one least expects. It may be dawn, dusk, sun, midnight, or be awake and do not let the Lord catch you asleep or ill-prepared. So as Jesus says, only the Father knows the day and the hour. Heaven and earth will pass away, but Jesus words and thus the events he predicts will never pass away. They will have to happen. So truly Jesus sees a reality behind and beyond what we see. What is the relationship with God? And the show of religious observance won't even emptiness at the center of your life. Is your life given to Christ? That is what is most important. People can resemble buildings that are outwardly impressive, but inwardly crumbling and abound for destruction. Jesus wants to build your life to last forever and is strong and true. Let him be your architect. Is Christ building your life? When we hear of the end times, the sun darkened, the moon without light, the stars falling from the heavens, we quite naturally tend to be fearful if we hear those terms. The true Christian, however, cannot be fearful, but must wait in hope. Why are we afraid when we know that God is with us every time? So which means whenever these things would happen, as Christians, we know that God is with us. This is the event for which we have lived our lives. This is the day of our salvation and our ticket back home to God. However, even though we do not fear, we must be ready and vigilant. We must be ready and vigilant. Generally, we do a very fine job of preparing for what we know. Especially if we know events that we expect at some future date that can pre preserve or determine. We make up plans and prepare for family events such as birthday days. We prepare for exams. If you are at school, you are told the date and you start preparing for the exam, you know it. We prepare for family events, anniversaries, graduations, and the like, because we know about these things. We also quite adept, despite the hectic pace, at preparing for major holidays. We prepare for Easter, we prepare for Christmas, we prepare for bigger events in the Christian calendar. We make extensive plans for our next vacation or a three-day weekend. So most people spend a considerable amount of time getting their finances and personal investment in order so that there will be adequate funds for retirement. You are making investment. You are making all these plans. But the issue is, do you know what? In all these preparations, all these things we are preparing for, all these things they will all disappear. Nothing will live forever. What about our future eternal life? What about our future eternal life? Do we prepare for it? Eternal life with God. Do we realize our need to prepare ourselves and the responsibility we have to the world to read society for the eventual return of Christ? I suppose this is not a topic men contemplate daily, but maybe... We should spend more quantity and quality time preparing for the coming of the Lord. Not at Christmas, but at the end of time. Yes, at Christmas is just a reminder of what is going to happen. We are being reminded of Christ coming to us. We are also being reminded of Christ coming back. So God calls us to prepare for the future. Not only on this earth, but more importantly, on our eternal life with God which is very important. So this ladder join may not begin for 50 years or more, but it may come tomorrow. It may come tomorrow. Anytime it may come tomorrow. Imagine, maybe you're picking up a newspaper, opening it and reading in giant letters, Jesus will come or return or December 25. 
If you hear those words, what will you do? How would you react to this astonishing information? It's in the newspaper. I think there would be two basic reactions. Some of us, out of fear, would change our lives immediately because they've been told Christ is coming on December 25th. So the Lord is coming and we are not ready. We might start going to church more often because they've been told that Christ is coming on December 25th. Probably every day we are going to church. Prayer would become much more higher priority every day we are praying now because we've heard about it. We would pray not only in the morning and evening, but many times each day because we've been told. And we are even counting the days to say we are only left with maybe one month, we are left with two months, we are left with four weeks, we are left with six weeks. We would seek reconciliation with a member of our family, our neighbor, our co-worker, and settle with God. We want to be in good relationship because we've been told. Others might have a different response. Some of us might do nothing differently. They'll just turn it down and say, no, I don't worry about it. Some in a defeatist attitude might say, there's nothing I can do at this later stage, later hour. God has already decided my fate. I might as well continue what I've been doing all along. There are still others who might not change a thing they are doing, but in a defeatist mode. Okay, some of us hopefully will say, isn't this the event which we, the world has been waiting for? I've been waiting for this day. And I am well prepared. So these are some people who are already waiting. Isn't this the reason that I was born for? So possession of such an attitude would allow us to continue doing what we have always been doing. Confident that our preparations have been sound. I am ready. I am prepared. Just like farmers. They know when the rain season begins. They are prepared for the new planting season. They are even prepared for the harvest. They know the seasons, the changing of time. So even when the rains come, they know they are already prepared. While one must be vigilant and properly prepared, there should be nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. God is the judge. But as Christians, living in the light and hope of Christ's message of reconciliation, peace and love, we are to be confident that the Lord stands ready to welcome us. So the question we must ask is, have we faithfully led the life the Lord has given us? When all these things are happening, yes, I know people were even afraid of COVID-19 and still are afraid of it. But the question is, are you ready if you are to die today or tomorrow? Are you ready to meet your God? Are you prepared because that's the most important thing. You need to be prepared. We must evaluate our lives. Take the often time prayers in our journey of self-discovery and ask the hard questions. What we find may surprise us, but we can and must change as may be necessary. If we ask ourselves, there is time for room, there is room for you to change. When you continue to ask yourself to say, am I ready? Am I ready for this day? So we only need to fear if we procrastinate in our relationship with God. We cannot wait for, for it, but must act today. We don't need to wait. We need to act today and not tomorrow. We must not wait until something happens. We must not wait until COVID-19 comes. We must not wait until an earthquake arises. We must not wait until maybe a, 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 an eruption, a volcanic eruption comes. Or a tsunami has come. We must not wait for those things. Or an accident. Or a health maybe are now been taken to hospital. Or economic misfortune to make it right with our relation with God. We must need to get going now. We need to prepare now and not tomorrow. And that is very important for us. Jesus warned his followers about the future so that they could learn how to live in the present. Jesus did not make these predictions so that we would guess when they might be fulfilled, but to help us remain spiritually alert. 
and prepared at all times as wait for his return. He has not prepared us to count the days to say, no, the end is, is in two, 2025 or is 2030. No, 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 no. He is calling us to be alert and vigilant. Be prepared always. We must live each day close to Christ. Always mindful that he is in charge of the timetable. It's not for us to read the calendar, but it's for him. He is the one in charge of the timetable. So Jesus warning in the gospel is to be aware of the signs of the times, challenges to open our eyes and ears to contemporary to our contemporary world. So we would be blind not to realize that secularization dominates our society. We cannot avoid this reality. We should reap the benefits of our first world society. But living in the world does not mean we must be of the world. Even if it becomes the first world or third world, whichever world you are living in, it doesn't change your belief in Christ. It doesn't change your faith in Christ. But we should never be sacralized. We should live a Christian life. We must be the signs of the times of which Jesus speaks. One of the more prominent signs of today's world preaches an anti-Christian message. People are preaching an anti-Christian message. We, the contemporary disciples of Jesus, must be therefore a sign of a different Christ-centered message. We must be a sign for the vigilance that is needed and the preparedness we must undertake. The way we are prepared tells the world that we know what we are doing. We are not worried, we are not afraid because we are preparing for our Christ. We find this in constant warning, a warning against false Christ. Some may think that this is not a danger today. I think it is very pertinent right now. For example, the Christ of liberalism is an antichrist. He is not the real Christ. Some of you may think that they preach the Christ of the Bible. No, they do not. According to their statements, the Christ they preached was not born a virgin. The Christ they preached never performed a miracle. They did not shed, he did not shed his blood for the sins of the world. Was not raised bodily from the grave. Did not ascend into heaven and is not coming again bodily. So do you know there is no Jesus like that in the Bible? As long as you preach that message, it's antichrist. Because there's no Jesus like that in the Bible. The Jesus I believe in, the Jesus of the Bible was born a virgin. Did not perform miracles. He did perform miracles. He did shed his blood. His blood for the sins of the world. That's the Jesus I believe in. He was raised body from the grave and ascended into heaven and is coming again. That's the, uh, the Jesus I believe in. So this is what the Bible says. And the Bible contains the only documents of any historical nature concerning him. So the Bible, all these great cardinal facts of the faith, evidently the liberal is talking about another Christ, another Jesus. So when the liberal preaches, they are preaching of a different Christ, another Jesus. And any other Christ, friend, is antichrist. Beware, he said, some will say they will preach false Christ. Listen to the Apostle John. Little children, it is the last time as you have heard that antichrist shall come. Even now as there are men antichrist, whereby we know that it is the last time. 1 John 2 verse 18. So there are a lot of antichrist. I have called your attention to the one of liberalism. But if there are a lot of phonies around today claiming to be Christ, there are quite a number. So we must be a sign for the vigilance that is needed and be prepared we must undertake. There must be the signs we give to the world, not the fear that paralyzes and leads into inaction. We need not to carry a sign that warns the end is near. We can do much more and be more positive through the example we set. We don't need to be carrying the, 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 the message, the placard telling people the end is near. No, 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 no. The way we live shows that the end is near because we are prepared as Christians. A popular Christian hymn from some time back provides the goal. They will know we are Christians by our love. By our love, they will know we are Christians. Yes, they will know we are Christians by our love. A popular tale demonstrates the proper Christian vocation, for example. One day, a young missionary spotted a woodcutter 
hard at work in the forest. What a perfect opportunity to the missionary when he learned that the woodcutter had never heard of the Lord for me to make a convert for Jesus. All day the man chopped wood, carried it to his wagon, and then walked back to chop another Lord. After a good long time, the missionary who had been telling the woodcutter about the life and the message of Jesus said, well, are you ready now to accept and believe in Jesus Christ? I don't know, replied the woodcutter. All day long, you spoke to me of this man, Jesus, who helps us with our burdens and assists us with our daily task. But he had never even lifted a finger to help me with mine. You had not helped me. You saw me doing what I was doing. Sometimes we see people, we talk to people who are doing their work. If you want to preach a message, you help them what they are doing. You carry the burden together with them. You do what they are doing. Help them. Our advent begins with our need to patient and to, without fear or consternation, wait for the coming of the Lord at the end of time. At this time of the year, the busy lives we lead only become more filled with things to do, people to see, activities that fill our schedules. We become stressed out and worried about many things. And we forget why Advent is there. We forget because we are busy. Our business often keeps us from the concentrating on the things that are much more fundamental in our lives. More especially our relationship with God. We fear waiting, for we do not like the unknown. However, today's scripture readings tells us that we need to develop the ability to wait patiently for God, always remembering how patient God is with us. He is. Death, our ultimate meeting with God, is a fearful event for most of us because we have no control or are baffled by what will happen. Yet if we have done what God asked us, if we have made, made a good effort to fulfill our vocations to holiness and service, then there is nothing to fear. You are saying, if I die, I am going to be with my Lord. So why should I be afraid? So death is no longer something to fear. Because we know who we are serving. Ours is to concentrate on the person we are serving. As our Advent journey begins, therefore, let us find the time to wait with joy and wonder. Let us take the time to wait for God and who created us, has loved us, and stands ready to greet us with the words of encouragement. Come you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25 verse 34. May the good Lord help you as you are waiting for the coming of the Lord. Don't be afraid. God is always with you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He walks with me every time. Even when I face the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For his rod will comfort me. God is there for you. Fear not, children of God. May God bless you as you continue to wait upon the Lord. Wait without fear. God helps you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us thank God. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for everything that you do to us. We thank you that you continue to look after us. God of the prophets and of the priests. God of the disciples and the apostles. God of the witness through the generations. You are a God of patience and perseverance. A God of love and hope. A God of healing and resolve. A God we can trust and rely on. A God who is all for all people. A God who never lets us down. God of all, we adore you. You are our purpose and our motivation. May you continue to show us your love. May you continue to encourage us in our waiting rooms. Be with us, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us just thank God as we take our offering, remembering that everything we do, everything that we have come from God, and we are just saying, thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you with everything. Bless us, Father. Bless our offerings. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. For you have shown who you are to us. 
as we bring our offerings, Father, we acknowledge that everything comes from you. Bless it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, let us receive grace. Loving God, I place into your hands all our fears about the state of the world, all our despair at the violence within the world, all our concerns about the fragility of the environment and all our worries about our own lives, even during this COVID-19, all our doubts that you will stay faithfully, you will stay faithful to your people. Loving God, I place into your hands today, tomorrow, and all the time. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Amen.